Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay and I've been able to do some running of late, perhaps even some non-park runs. Now as some of you may know, I, I lead the team at Athletics Data that runs two athletics and running sites in the UK, the Power of 10 and RunBritainRankings.com on behalf of the National Go Governing Body, UK Athletics. As part of that, Park Run kindly let us have access to their UK results and we use them to show Park Run times alongside race times on athlete profiles to enhance our race results service and as part of our runner handicap scheme on runbritainrankings.com. Now whilst the time since we could last do a Park Run seems of a distinct memory, there does seem to be some light at the end of the tunnel with the recent gradual lifting of lockdown restrictions in the UK and worldwide and the news that Park Run is going to be starting again in New Zealand very shortly. As such I thought it would be a good opportunity to put on my Park Run 100 t-shirt that it took me some 12 years to earn, go for a run in my local home run which, which is here in Bushy Park and revisit a much debated topic which is the UK's fastest and slowest park run. Now if you've ever watched the running channel on YouTube or seen it mentioned on various social media forums and indeed Athletics Weekly, the topic has already been debated a fair bit and all those uh, listings actually came from my work that I did for park runs in 2018. So in this video I want to give a bit of an insight into how the rankings are calculated and then present a new list for all part runs in the UK since 2019 i.e since the end of the last listing. I should add that whilst I'm very grateful to part run for the spy of their results and UK Athletics for their continued governance this is very much a personal video and it's not uh, officially endorsed by part run or UK Athletics in any way. With that said let's first have a look at the factors which make any part run on any given day fast or slow. Hello I'm back indoors now it's actually the next day and I've had a chance to have a shower and also to wash my Park Run 100 t-shirt in case you think it was Park Run fresh. So let's look at the factors what determine what is a fast or slow Park Run. Well probably the most important is what type of surface is it. Generally a tarmac course will be the fastest and if it's any type of um, softer surface like mud, sand or snow it's going to significantly slow you down and also how wet is it underfoot because a wet tarmac course can be, can be slow as well. Another hugely important factor is how hilly it is. Obviously a flat course is generally going to be the fastest unless it's very windy. An undulating one may give you a bit of help on the downhills, but one that finishes far higher than it starts also will be very difficult. Also the weather is going to be hugely important. The wind is probably the most important factor, but if it's very hot or very cold, that can also be a, has a, have an impact. And also if it's um, heavily raining and snowing, it's going to slow you down as well. Another factor is how many other park runners are around you. Now that can be of, of help and not. If it's um, if you're in a big group, you can get a drafting effect and get a bit of pacing from the other runners. If there's too many park runners, you may get stuck on stuck behind people and can't get by. And uh, also you have to be polite in a park run. So that can be a factor as well. On a similar theme, if the course is very twisty and turny, especially has lots of U-turns in it, that's going to slow you down. For every dead turn, it's probably going to add on five or ten seconds just to uh, slow down and accelerate again. And also, part-run courses aren't strictly measured to an exact 5K, so they're, they're measured as well as they can be, but it's quite possible that some may be slightly shorter than an actual 5K and some may be slightly long. Now, in terms of what is fast or slow, that's obviously going to have a factor in the, in the times. And the final thing is perhaps you, you yourself, how, how you actually try it on the day, what your fitness is, what type of shoes you're wearing. That's a whole different subject if you see some of my other YouTube videos. So what are the ways that we can rank park runs? Well, I've classified them as two types. Um, the first type is what I call average conditions. If you just turned up any given on any given day at random to a park run, well, it, what are you most likely to find? And that is actually the method by which we're going to do this video analysis on, and in fact, all the other ones are. Now, the other type of analysis, if it's ideal conditions, a key, a, um, a classic example there could be a course at the seaside. If it's very flat, it could be very fast on a, on a, on a windless day. But if the wind gets up, that can be extremely tough. Running into the wind is obviously going to be very hard and you won't get necessarily the benefit of coming back the other way. And similarly, a course that could be bone dry in the summer, say on grass, could be extremely muddy in the winter and also have a completely different time as you would expect in those muddy conditions to, to the dry conditions. So how do we actually work out um, these ratings? So what I do is for each part run run, and by that I mean like the event hash number. So like for example, their bushy uh, event number 123 or Kingston 321, work out a measurement of its relative difficulty now, we call this the SSS, and this terminology is based on what they do in golf. So they have this concept called the standard scratch score. 
So that's a way of judging how difficult a course is. And then for each park run event, we work out the average of the SSS scores over the period of which we're interested in. So how do we actually compute this SSS value? Well, what we first do is each park runner's time at an event is translated into a point score on a golf handicap type scale. And that is sort of roughly 0 to 54 that corresponds to like the strokes you would get in golf. And it's the actual um, conversion is largely based on an age graded tables, but without having the age element, there isn't actually any sort of specific point scoring for gender or age. Everyone just gets a score and uh, the differential is just comparing yourself with others in that um, age group or gender. So then using all the data we've got from races and other park runs, we then compute what is your best score in a fairly recent park run or other race. And we do that for each park runner. And then we then take the difference between the best value and the score you got on the day. And that is what's called your My SSS. So for example, if somebody ran 20 minutes in a park run, which gets 9.7 points, but their best time is otherwise 19 minutes, which is actually 7.6, their My SSS would be the difference of the two, i.e. 2.1. So you can see that if somebody ran a lot closer to their personal best or even ran faster than a minute, then that my SS value would be a lot lower, it may have been negative if they'd done a PB. So we do some filtering to sort of weed out people that may not have been necessarily trying that day or maybe just don't have enough data for them. And then we take the median of all those my SS scores and that is then the SSS for that particular part run run. So as I mentioned, SSS of 0.0 means largely ideal conditions. That means everybody could do a PB, not necessarily they will do, but there's a high chance that they might through to a maximum value I've set of 10.0, where it would be extremely tough indeed. That might be some extremely muddy course, or maybe it's snowbound or deep sand, or just generally really, really tough conditions. The fastest park runs have a typical average score of around about 1.0. So typically the, the fastest park runs aren't as fast as the fastest road races, as you might imagine, because the courses are generally uh, not geared up to maximum speed. And a typical score in a part one is about 2.0. So what, the, what does that actually mean in practical terms? Well, it's not an exact to conversion, but very roughly 1.0 SSS points over the 5k distance creates about 30 seconds. So that's now have a look at what came out as the fastest five part runs since 2019. So we do this in descending order. I won't try and put any clips in here because I was a bit worried about copyright, but I'll put some links in the notes to once you can check out these part runs if you want to have a look at them. So number five comes in at a one in Newcastle under Lyme called the Whammy. I haven't actually run this one, but it's on an old railway. So as you can imagine, it's going to be fairly straight and fairly flat. And it's all on a tarmac course. Number four comes in at Pegball Bay. That also featured in the top five last year. And that's in Kent on um, trails near, near the Kent coast. This is maybe a slightly odd one to be at so fast, but I do worry that this one may not be quite an exact 5K. So that was another factor in how fast or slow it could be, as I mentioned earlier on. Third is another out and back railway course. Um, in this one is in Wales called Everbeg. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's slightly uphill out when I had a look at the gradient, but so you get a big lift coming back. And when I looked at a course video, it seemed to be quite narrow and tree lined, so I must get some shelter if, if there's any wind. Number two is actually what was the fastest part in the last one. So it's been knocked off its perch. This is Victoria Dock Park Run in central London. It's right by run by the river. It's dead flat. The only thing that uh, slows it down is two ten dead turns. Now this is the only one I've actually run of these um, five. And uh, the day I did it was blowing a gale, but I still ran a pretty quick time. So on a good day, that would be extremely fast. And the number one course is a bit of a surprise. This is actually a brand new one, Barclay Green in Gloucestershire, which is a, a, on the site of a disused nuclear power station. There's a sort of industrial science park there now, and it's open up to the public. And obviously they put a park run in, in there. I think it only just started. I think we've only done about five um, park runs. So maybe the data may be slightly skewed in that one. But it's a, looking at the videos, it's a pan flat tarmac course, two laps, and um, there's already been some very quick times on it. So I certainly want to check out when we can get back to park running. So going the other way, what are the slowest five park runs? Well, the fifth one is often one, a notorious one at Millam in Cumbria. Now this is quite a good example of how a park run can be extremely slow just because of the conditions. If you look at uh, when they're in summer, imagine you'd see some dry, some nice uh, lush grass fields and fairly flat. But if, if you look at the videos of it in the winter, it's just like a, a paddy field, just so wet and muddy. And as you can see how 
how obvious the time's going to be slowed. I think people typically do at least five minutes slower than they might do elsewhere on that one. Number four is another one that featured in last year's Slowest Fire. This is Watergrave, a very hilly, loose and standy bridleway course near Rochdale. When I looked at the course profile, there, was, there wasn't really one flat bit on the whole course. The third one also was, this was actually another one that was has been featured in the, in the slowest ones before. This is Winlatter Forest in the Lake District. And this is a very hilly course, but made even tougher by the fact you actually finish a lot higher up than you start. Number two, again, the uh, this was actually the slowest course in 2018. So again, it's been knocked off its perch. But this is uh, a largely sand, all sandy course in Devon. I think there's a bit of trail and there's a very steep uphill sandy bit, which um, makes it even tougher. And the slowest park run I found this time is actually another new one. And this is another sandy one in Great Yarmouth. And this has only had five runnings so far. So maybe there's a slight element of not having enough data on this one yet. But the five runnings of it so far have been very, very tough. I think that it's so exposed there. It's whatever wind there is just blows straight through. And looking at the pictures, the sand looks quite soft as well. So another one you might want to check out when we can get back to park running and maybe get an ice cream there as well at the same time. So what do you think? Have you done any of those top fives? The only one I've actually done of those is Victoria Dock. So I think I'll uh, try and get myself to a few of the uh, ones I can get to when, when we can. Um, do you agree with the findings? If you've, if you've done some of these, did you run very fast or very slow on those ones? Did it surprise you? Have you heard other people do that as well? What you also have to remember here is it's based on average conditions. So, for instance, some of those um, sandy ones in the summer, if it's not too windy, they may be slightly better. And Millen, maybe if you do that right now in June, July, when it hasn't been too much rain, that may be a lot faster as well. Now, one of the things I, I've done is I'm a bit of a closet park run tourist. I've now done 79 park runs out of my just over 100 total. So I started doing the tourism to check out these algorithms. And by and large, I think that um, for me, the results do tend to sort of largely bear out with, with the algorithm. Now, the difference is here, that I've got 692 part runs in the list, I think I'll show you in a minute. And some of the differences between the adjacent part runs of the list are literally no more than a single second, if that. So differences are very, very small. So I hope you like this video. And it's a bit of a change from my normal ones about shoes, which I'm a bit of a sort of an apprentice shoe tuber, as it were. At least with this, I feel like I know a bit more about it. So I'd like to give you a bit of an insight into what we do on Power of 10 and Run Britain as well and hope to do a few more videos on these lines in the future, including the handicap scheme. So I'll play out with a list of the 692 UK park runs that have been run since January 2019 that aren't in prisons, and hopefully you'll see some ones that you've done. Okay, I hope you found this interesting, and look forward to seeing the next one. Okay, bye!